Hello everyone, I'm Santiago Santiago and today I'm going to be testing the i3-8100 paired with the GTX 1050 Ti on many games. First of all, if you want to skip to any of those particular games I tested, just check the timestamps down in the description. I used the i3-8100 with one of the B360 boards. I used the ASRock B360M dash HTB. I actually didn't find this one on Amazon, so I recommend a different one down in the description. I wouldn't really buy this one if it was for personal use, since you only get two RAM slots. I will get one from Gigabyte that has four RAM slots and it is pretty cheap actually. This is what I had available in my country, at least at the time of making this video, and I used 16 GB of RAM. 2 by 8 gigabyte sticks so we are on dual channel and why did i use 16 gigabytes well so you can see how much ram these modern games use for example battlefield 1 uses more than 8 gigabytes so you can see the ram usage up there the first value on the ram is the physical ram usage and the second value which is higher is the physical ram usage plus the page file usage the physical ram usage is the first value so take a look at that one not the second one so yeah i'm going to try and get 60 frames per second on 1080p on most of these games i'll be tweaking the settings accordingly and all that kind of stuff and hopefully next week i'll do this same video but using a gtx 1060 instead so well first of all we got battlefield 1 and i'm using as i said at the beginning of the video 1080p on medium settings with some stuff turned up, such as textures, because we have enough VRAM for that. And well, so far this game was over 60 frames per second pretty much all the time. Sometimes when there was a lot going on, a lot of explosions, smoke, plus many players on screen, there were some drops below 60 frames per second, but overall it was over 55, which is very respectable if you ask me, very smooth. But yeah, it uses a lot of RAM, so make sure to have more than 8GB if you want the smoothest experience possible. This was on a 64 player match, one of those levels that gave me the worst performance so far. I talk to you again in the next game. I can fix them. First aid, use it. Enemy tank. Now I'm testing Far Cry 5, and once again I'm doing 1080p. And on the settings, I use pretty much a mix between normal and low. I kept shadows and geometry and vegetation, those two options, on the lowest, because those were the biggest performance hits. And my objective here is to be as close as possible to 60 frames per second on 1080p. So well, when you're just running in the wilderness with a lot of foliage around you, for example, that there are a lot of trees, a lot of grass, all that kind of stuff, we get drops as low as 50 frames per second, at least from my experience it was that way. So I show you a little bit of that at the start of the footage then i just start fighting in one of those small places so you should be a decent way to see how the game performs overall and when you're attacking enemies and there are a lot of effects showing up for example when they throw some smoke bombs uh, it fills the screen it can usually drop into the 50s i didn't see any major drops below 50 so in my opinion that's smooth enough and the game still looks great considering that shadows are on low and geometry is as well so yeah it's completely playable i'll talk to you again in the next game
Now I'm testing PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds or PUBG and I'm using 1080p once again on my tweak settings in order to get good visuals plus good performance, at least that's what I'm trying to do, into the Pochinki area, since that's a place where I usually get bad performance and a lot of players are usually running around in that area just fighting each other, so it's usually a good place to do benchmarks because there's always people there, <laughs> at least most of the time they just drop into that area. And so far, once again, I'm over 50 frames per second when I'm getting attacked or something like that. It can drop a little bit depending on how many players are on screen. Sometimes indoors I get drops into the 50s, but once I get outside I get back up over 60. So it's kind of variable. Sometimes with the updates the game runs worse for no major reason at all. Then it gets updated again like a week after and performance is now good again. So I cannot really explain that, but this time around the game seems to be running just fine. Some stutters every now and then, but that happens to me with all CPUs I tested here. This game just has that problem, I guess. But yeah, it's completely playable. If you want to crank up the settings and play at 30, you can do that as well. But I'll talk to you again in the next game. Now I'm testing Fortnite Battle Royale and on this one 1080p once again and I'm using almost the highest settings. The only thing I lowered to high from Epic was Shadows that controls the quality and distance of the rendering of the shadows which is usually the biggest performance hit of the game. And well on this one so far it was over 60 frames per second without a problem. Sometimes it might drop below 60 into the mid 50s when there's a lot of construction going on plus more than three players on screen. But in my opinion it's not a major issue so I just kept shadows on high and moved on. But if you want a more stable experience without any drops below 60, maybe lower shadows lower or keep shadows on high and lower effects and post processing. That should allow you to stay over 60 all the time even when there's a lot going on. But yeah this one is very smooth, Epic did a great job with this one. I'll talk to you again in the next game. Now I'm just seeing GTA 5, once again 1080p, and I'm using a mix between high and very high. I specifically selected these settings in order to try and be over 60 frames per second once again like the video title says. But a couple things in the advanced graphics are turned on because I didn't usually have a problem with those things enabled which are long shadows and high detail streaming while flying. So what I did here, the testing methodology, it was just to fly into the intersection of two very busy streets and I started blowing up cars with the RPG. So with that many explosions on screen it can be a good stress test. When that happens 
since the CPU and GPU spiked to 100% because there are a lot of effects with explosions, fire, smoke, plus the AI is trying to flee. The police is also going into the scene. So there is more AI going on. The lowest drop I saw was to the mid 50s to 56 FPS close to the end of that clip, but it was just for a second, not really noticeable if you're playing the game. So yeah, it runs just fine. I'll talk to you again in the next game. Now I'm testing Assassin's Creed Origins and on this one I'm not doing 1080p exactly. I'm doing 1080p with the resolution modifier on 90%, so 10% less pixels than native 1080p, plus a mix between medium and low settings. That was to try and be as close as possible to 60 frames per second. And what I managed to do with these settings was to stay most of the time over 50 frames per second with some drops into the mid 40s depending on what's going on, especially if you're looking far into the distance. You can get drops into the 50s and sometimes into the 40s when you're fighting with some enemies. But yeah, this one uses a lot of GPU and a lot of CPU and I'm in Alexandria, which is one of the most CPU intensive places in the game, at least according to the community. They told me, hey, play on Alexandria. It's a CPU usage hog, plus the GPU can be hammered as well. So yeah, so far it was very acceptable, if you ask me. The game still looks very good. We get drops into the mid 40s as the worst case scenario, at least on my end. So yeah, we're 90% 1080p, not native 1080, but the game still looks very good. So yeah, I'll talk to you again in the next game. Attack on sight here. Hey! Bring him down! Hey! Awaiting orders. I'll get the fire going. Hey, Now I'm testing Rainbow Six Siege, and on this one like on Assassin's Creed Origins, I dropped the resolution 10% from 1080p, so I'm using 90% resolution scale, but on this one it's less noticeable because we have an option called TAA, it's similar to the checkerboard rendering that some games on the consoles use, but Ubisoft ruined this one because we used to have an option called Temporal Filtering, which just put the resolution scale at 25%, so we got very high frame rates with that option turned on, and most people didn't notice much of a difference, but recently Ubisoft just removed that option, it just merged temporal filtering with TAA, and now the game at 25% scale looks very blurry compared to the past, so now we have to use higher resolutions in order to get a sharper image. Now it looks very soft, which most people don't like, 
myself included. It tends to look quite blurry. But yeah, so far with the settings shown here, the game looks very good so far. Not perfect, but we are over 60 frames per second pretty much all the time even when you are getting shot by the enemy or something like that. So yeah, this one runs very good as well, and I'm going to talk to you again in the next game. You have located a bomb. The diffuser has been secured. The diffuser is online and active. Last operator standing. Yeah. Op 4 eliminated. Friendly mission successful. I'm testing Forza Horizon 3 using native 1080p and threaded optimization, which is something that the developers added to the game way after release that uses the CPU correctly. It just divides the usage between as many CPU cores as possible. And I selected a mix between medium and high settings with some stuff lower to low, for example, reflections. This area of the game, at least in my end, is very reflection intensive. If I have reflections anywhere over the low preset, the game just stutters a lot. And I'm doing this specific race because there are many opponents on screen, which is what usually destroys performance on this game. There are some stutters every now and then, which could be fixed if you just cap the game at 60 frames per second. The CPU would have less work to do, and the GPU would have some room to spare here and there. But so far the stutters happen when you're doing a turn, and there are some particles coming from the tires. Other than that, the game runs very well, and it's a lot of fun to play. I'll talk to you again in the next game. I'm testing Just Cause 3 and on this one I'm doing 1080p on pretty much high settings with some stuff turned off such as global illumination and screen space reflections since those are very GPU intensive and I'm trying to get 60 frames per second like all the games in this list and well so far when moving around and just attacking enemies and all that kind of stuff the game was running over 60 frames per second but once I blow up a gas station or something like that the game starts to just drop the frame rate below 60. It's not really a major problem, it stays over 50 most of the time. I blew up a couple gas stations because those are the biggest explosions in the whole game. They usually are a big hit to the GPU and for some reason the CPU as well. Maybe because there are some objects just flying around due to the explosion. And on the RAM this one was around 7.5 gigabytes of usage. But if you play for way longer periods of time, it can be over 8 gigabytes. So be aware of that. Some drops below 60, but still a completely playable experience. I'll talk to you again in the next game.
I'm testing Rise of the Tomb Raider and once again 1080p without DirectX 12 because on this game, at least in my case, it has some graphical problems with the sky and some other weird things. And on this one I'm using pretty much medium settings with some stuff turned up such as tessellation and screen space reflections. Those are completely disabled because they destroy performance, at least on my end. And as usual, because I find over 50 frames per second to be smooth enough, I had the game around that number. But once I get into the less demanding part of this level, I can stay very close to 60 frames per second. It wasn't really bad to play at all. It was very smooth, actually. But if you prefer better graphics and want to maintain this level of performance, you might want to consider drop to 900p or 720p. On those resolutions you can use high settings and get this performance I'm showing you here or smoother frame rates if you so desire. But on 1080p this is what we have and that's what the title of the video was saying. So yeah, I talk to you again in the next game. Lara, I'm sorry if Sophia was less than welcoming. I understand. I'm just glad you were there to vouch for me. My people have spent decades fighting outsiders. It's not an easy habit to break. See if you can lend a hand with the preparations. A little hard work would go a long way towards building trust. I'll see what I can do. They will likely come from the air. Jacob is assembling fighters in the upper village to draw their attention there. The children and the... Now I'm testing The Witcher 3, once again 1080p, and I'm using pretty much a mix between medium and low settings because once again I'm trying to maintain as close as possible to 60 frames per second. On the post-processing side of things, I'm in occlusion that fulfilled all the kind of stuff and the other are completely disabled in order to favor performance. And while the testing will be on Novigrad, one of the most CPU intensive places in the whole game, you'll notice as I get closer and closer to the city that the CPU usage will start going up, even reaching 100% usage. But so far that doesn't stop the GPU from being at 99% and maintaining over 50 frames per second. So yeah, the CPU usage is high, but the frame rate is over 50 frames per second, hitting 60 frames very often, and this is just one section of the game that uses a lot of CPU. So yeah, I talk to you again in the next game. Ah, ah, now at what you've done. Ah. Just you wait. Ugh. Oh. Four witches are uh, evil as as much as life. You. Where are you, Rootlin? Non human, are you? Look for your kind beyond the world. Actually, it's been displayed in the sideshow of the circus. Well. Hitman, I'll be doing 1080p on DirectX 11. Why DirectX 11? Well, because DirectX 12 uses more VRAM and I didn't see any major performance differences that tells me to just go for DirectX 12. So I recommend DirectX 11 for this game. And I'm using pretty much medium settings on the Marrakesh level, which is the level with the highest number of NPCs on screen. So there's a lot going on in this level. But you'll notice that the GPU usage is at 99% pretty much all the time. So that means that the GPU is being used correctly. But when I start fighting with the guards, you'll notice that the frame times get crazy and I get drops into the mid 40s. That's because there is a lot going on with the AI just trying to flee plus attacking my character. So yeah, that's usually how it goes. Not quite 60 frames per second, but you can still play it just fine. I'll talk to you again in the next game. Now I'm testing Counter-Strike Global Offensive or CSGO and I'm doing 1080p on the lowest settings because a lot of people in previous videos just asked me to test this game on the lowest settings to see what frame rate this CPU can just pull in this game. But keep in mind that this is a stress test, this is just a benchmark tool, so this is the worst of the worst case scenario. Just don't pay attention to the performance when there's smoke on screen. That's just an unrealistic amount of smoke, so the GPU usage kicks up to 99% and we get a drop below 30 frames per second. Really 
that doesn't happen while playing the game. Just take it as a stress test. But you can see the average frame rate of the whole benchmark at the end of this footage, so be aware of that. But yeah, this one runs just fine, to be expected. Now I'm testing Fallout 4 and I'm using 1080p with unlocked frame rates. Plus a mix between high and ultra. I pretty much lowered shadows and shadow distance from ultra to high. The god rates and the amino occlusion a little bit lower. And so far the lowest frame rate I saw was 50 frames per second. Not really a big problem if you ask me. The GPU is the limiting factor here. As you will see in the video is at 99%. So that means that the GPU is being pushed to the limit. So if you want a higher frame rate here, consider a better GPU like a GTX 1060. Or just lower the settings a little bit more or the resolution. But yeah, not much else to say about this one. I'll talk to you again in the next game. The latest hairstyles from the upper stands. Move along. Swatta, swatta, who needs a swatta? We buy and sell everything to everyone, except since. No sense allowed Prescriptions, here. Bill. High quality cams. Right. Nothing to see here. And finally, Batman Arkham Knight. And on this one, I'm using pretty much low settings with textures on normal because this game can be a big hit to your GPU, especially when you're just moving around in the Batmobile. While doing that and going very fast through the map, destroying different things all around you, it can usually be a big hit to the GPU. The biggest drop I saw was around 40 45 FPS when going fast with the Batmobile, plus destroying jazz stuff around you it can be very noticeable especially if you're chasing another car or something like that so yeah it can usually be a stuttery mess if you're just moving around very quickly through the map but when you're just fighting it's usually fine i don't really have much to complain about while fighting it's usually it's usually very stable in those moments it can go over 8 gigabytes of ram usage if you have 8 gigabytes of ram it will still be fine don't worry just expect a little more stutter when you're playing for more than 30 minutes. But yeah, so far no matter what hardware I throw at this game, it can stutter anyway. As I usually say, this game stutters by default. I played it with worse conditions than this, so you can manage, I'm sure. So yeah, now conclusion time. I'm not going to tell you you have to buy it or not buy it. It always varies depending on where you live, because in some countries it can be cheaper than buying something from AMD, or it can be more expensive. It all depends on where you live, the pricing, so this is just a video to let you know how the games perform and what to expect from these modern games if you build the system. So what would I recommend it? Yes, it's 4 cores, I know, 4 cores, 4 threads, but due to the high single threaded performance, the games usually run pretty well, even games like Assassin's Creed Origins can be very smooth. Yeah, I know it's not perfect, but it's very impressive if you ask me, a game that uses so much CPU, being over 50 frames per second most of the time. Then on the RAM side of things, if you have 8 GB of RAM it's fine, but on some games, to give you an example, Batman Arkham Knight, Forza Horizon 3, Just Cause 3, Battlefield 1 multiplayer on a 64 player match, it can make a difference between 
no stutter and a lot of stutter so that's something to keep in mind so yeah if you cannot afford more than 8 gigabytes of ram you can still play most games don't worry about that but if you have 16 gigabytes it will be obviously better and most of these games were limited by the gpu this means that the limiting factor here on most instances was the gtx 1050 ti so if you want better frame rates on most of these games just get a better gpu for example a gtx 1060 that's what i'm going to test next week hopefully, and make sure that the RAM is on dual channel, that's crucial on most new games that use a lot of CPU. So yeah guys, that's pretty much it, I hope you enjoyed this video, thanks for watching and see you next time!